all right? Because we are going to practice more of this, because I do want to give you guys some more practice for this stuff. So we will practice more of this on Tuesday. However, can we isolate our, can we isolate over here? Yes. So I'm going to add a 5. So now I have the square root of x plus 7 is equal to x plus 5. Now, what's great about these problems is these are now incorporating a lot of our chapter 4 or our unit 3 stuff, which deals with quadratics. That's why I really like these problems. Because now, um, in this case, yeah, you could convert it to a, rash, a rational power if you wanted to. But in your gut, how do we get rid of the square root? Square it. Square it, right? And just a reminder, my biggest pet peeve ever x plus 5 squared is not x squared plus 5 squared. What do you have to do? FOIL. So therefore, I'm going to do FOIL in my head because I'm a little short on time. So that's x squared plus um, 10x plus 25. This is also a perfect square uh, trinomial, which we've talked about over and over, which we discovered on perfect square uh, and completing the square. So this should be something that's semi-familiar with you guys a little bit. Now we have a lot of x's, right? So if we have a lot of x's, what previously helped us out was using inverse operations. But when we have so many x's and we have an x raised to the second power, inverse operations is not going to help. We have to now use quadratic formula. You could do factoring. You could do completing the square, all the different types. But before you do that, you have to first have your equation set equal to 0. So I subtract an x, subtract a 7. 0 equals x squared plus 9x um, plus 18. So if you guys remember what we did for factoring, we're basically saying what two numbers multiply to give you 18 and then add to give you 9. Right? Because a is equal to 1, so we can just use that. So you think about it. What two numbers multiply to give you 18 add to give you 9? 6 and 3. So therefore, you could say x plus 6 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0. And therefore, we have x equals negative 6, x equals negative 3. However, at the beginning of class, I told you, you have to check your answers. Right? You have to check your answers. So um, let's, uh, let's go through this and see what we get. So when we go ahead and check our answers, we have negative 6. Negative 6 plus 7 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Well, actually, let me write this. Yeah, so that s equals negative 6. All right. So negative 6 plus 7 is 1. Um, square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 5. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Does, does negative 4 equal negative 6? No, so this one doesn't work. Or it's what we call extraneous. Let's check negative 3. Negative 3, um, so now when I plug this in, it has to equal negative 3. So negative 3 plus 7 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So this answer works. I'll give you a hint. When you guys are solving these, yes? Question? Wait, what? Uh, is it negative 6 plus 7 is positive 1, and radical is positive 1 is negative 1 as well? Negative 1 minus 5 is negative 1. The square root. Oh, um, yes, but when, we're, when you're dealing with the square root, you're only dealing with the positive square root. The only time we do with the 